section and earlier on it said poor so let's get this moving so like we said before if you want to play along um do it in the chat you can do the answers as you go um but it's probably the best way is a bit of pen and paper so that you can make sure that you do the answers and then after each round um you can have a look so let's see what is what so our quiz is going to look a bit like this So our quiz is going to look like this. So there's going to be uh, four rounds of around about 10 questions. After each round, uh, I'm going to go through the answers. And round four uh, isn't GCCPE technically. However, it is still sport based because it's going to be a bit of an emojis round looking at sports people. So it will look something like this. So you'll see we've got round one, which is multiple choice. We've got round two, uh, which is short response. Round three is diagrams and round four is sports stars and emojis. So looks like the people are slowly joining us. Hopefully we can keep this connection as good as we can. So in the chat, please make sure you comment just so I know that uh, if there's any issues with the um, stream or if there's any problems along the way. Sorry, I've got my phone with me. I'm just trying to invite people uh, who may have found an issue with obviously the nonsense we had earlier okay so let's give it a go so round one which is going to be multiple choice as you all know round one uh so the first set of questions in gccp are all multiple choice so these are the sorts of questions that you're always going to see at the starting exam and you would have seen had we um, had the exam today, which would have been paper one. So which one of these is the most appropriate test to measure maximal strength is going to be our first question. So I'm just going to leave it there just for a bit because there are more and more people joining as hopefully they find this. So I'm just going to leave that up for you where you can think about the answers. We've got A, which is a 30 meter sprint test, B, which is the hand grip dynamometer test, C, the one rep max test, and D, which is the vertical test, the vertical jump test. OK, so we're looking for which one of these is the most appropriate to measure maximal strength. So if you think you know the answer, maybe put it in the chat. If you're going to play it on pen and paper, uh, go from there. Remember, this is question one in our round one. OK, so question two. Which one of these lung volumes is defined as the volume of, of air left in the lungs after maximal expiration? Is it A, expiratory reserve volume, B, inspiratory reserve volume, C, residual volume, or D, tidal volume? So lots of different volumes there that you're going to need to know in your GCSE PE exam. Okay, so question three. Which one of these uh, muscles is found at the shoulder joint? Is it A, the deltoid, B, the gastrocnemius, C, the gluteals, or D, the tibialis anterior? So which one of these muscles is found at the shoulder joint? Question number four, which one of these bones is located at the ankle joint? Is it the femur, the humerus, the scapula or the talus? So again, put which one you think is the correct answer. Question five, which one of these best describes coordination? Is it A, to change the body's position quickly is it b to exercise the body for long periods of time c to move two or more body parts uh, together smoothly or d to perform strength movements quickly Okay, number six, which one of these 
is uh, oh, sorry, which one of these are suitable methods for collecting qualitative data? So a bit of a sneaky question. This comes up quite regularly, this type of question. So is it A, interviews and observations? Is it B, interviews and surveys? Is it C, observations and surveys? Or is it D, questionnaires and surveys? Okay, number seven. Which one of these is incorrect? Ooh, don't sharpen my voice there. Uh, the skeleton provides oxygen for the working muscles. B, the skeleton provides protection for vital organs. C, the skeleton provides structural shape and points for attachment. Or D, the skeleton provides support. So which one of these is incorrect? Yeah, not many people play in the chat, but that is absolutely fine. Just comment if you are watching because still slightly uh, dubious about my internet connection today. Okay, question eight. Which one of these is an immediate effect of exercise? Is it A, an improvement in muscular endurance? Is it B, movement, uh, sorry, improvement in stamina? C, increase in aerobic fitness? Or D, increase in heart rate? Here we go. Right. So it was my issue with the chat. OK, so next question. So number nine, uh, which one of these uh, performers is most likely to use altitude training? Is it A, a canoeist, B, a gymnast, C, a hockey player or D, a marathon runner? Just put me back on the screen. OK, so. One more question and then we will do the answers to uh, our first round. OK, number 10, the wall toss measures which component of fitness is it a agility? Is it B balance, C coordination or D flexibility? So the wall toss test measures which component of fitness. Now, these are the sort of questions that you are going to see every single year. So you will get asked about uh, fitness tests, about which one is correct, which one is incorrect, what they test, as well as things like methods of training and principles of um, principles of training and lots of lots of other things. OK, so. There are 10 answers that you could have done, and here are the answers that we should have done. So. Number one, we had C, which was the one rep max test. Um, we then had residual volume, which was C again. Number three was A, which is the deltoid, which is the muscle in the shoulder. Uh, D is the talus. Uh, C is to move uh, to move two or more body parts together smoothly, so that's obviously coordination. Uh, number six is interviews and observations. Now, um, what we mean by uh, quantitative and qualitative, hopefully you've gone through, but one of them is about um, data as far as numbers, and the other one's more about opinions. Uh, number seven uh, is A, the skeleton provides uh, oxygen for the working muscles is incorrect. So therefore, that's the only one that was incorrect. Uh, D, increased heart rate. Uh, number nine was a marathon runner. And number 10 was coordination. So put your scores down. See what you got. So Abby got nine out of ten. Well done, Abby. See, so see how many my students got. So Morgan, Gurren, Deep, Stan, how do you do? Now this is the part of paper that lots of people in their revision kind of overlook. So a lot of it is that you might misread a question. So where it said things like which one is 
incorrect you might just get that a little bit wrong so uh, i said not bad since i've only learned paper two well that's that's a strange one lots most people start on paper one or a bit of a 50 50 split well done and marie with your 10 out of 10 okay so round two is some short response things so things like definitions um and you know those quite kind of one or two markers that you might see in the exam so let's have a look at round two okay so round two here are all the questions i've put them on the screen all at once just so you can see a bit better um so here we are if you don't have paper it might just help you out that little bit so number one uh, name the two types of movement that can occur at a hinge joint okay so this could be a one mark question because at hinge joint there are two moves, movements available it's essentially what you're being asked in this question okay uh num number two is name two flats should be bones in the body number three is define cardiac output Four is what is meant by the term fatigue. Five is, defi is define health. Number six is define fitness. So health and fitness are very different things. I'm just going to take a quick drink. Next one is, and again, I've put this in because some of my students who are doing their coursework at the moment aren't very good at telling me what is in a warm up. So there are three stages of warm up. What are they? After that, we're looking at stating one improvement to fitness that a performer may gain from a well planned circuit training program. And then finally, number 10, name one test that can be used to measure power. So, again, back on those fitness tests. So, going through those again. So, and name the two types of movement that can occur at a hinge joint. So in this question, first thing you need to know is what the hinge joint is in the body. Then you're thinking what movements are they possible to do? Second is name two flat bones in the body. Again, don't do silly things like putting left and right, this and the other, because it's not ever going to get a mark. Number three is define cardiac output. So this is um, some of the things about the cardiovascular system. So I'll give you a quick clue. This one's about the heart. And the reason you know that it says cardiac what is meant by the term fatigue and again we've got to be spot on so i talk about uh, goldilocks terms with my students because it has to be just right we've got to make sure that when you're doing these that you are getting the correct uh, terminology and that you're not sounding like you've never studied the course before next up is define health then define fitness so health and fitness are different can you be fit without being healthy? That can answer the question that they like putting in every year. Uh, state what is meant by the term flexibility. Again, we need that definition. So it's got to be that Goldilocks term. What are the three stages of warm up? Again, they've got to be in the right order. Uh, state one improvement. And there are loads and loads that you could put. But it's only asking for one. Um, one improvement to fitness that a performer may gain from a well-planned circuit training session and name one test that can be used to measure power. So let's give you another 10, 15 seconds and then I'll go on to the answers. Gone a bit quiet again in the chat. I know there's not many of you out there today, but that's fine. OK, so going to go through the answers in four three two one okay so here we are then so the two uh, movements that can occur at a hinge joint are just flexion extension so my elbow is a hinge joint it can only do flexion or extension can't do anything else uh, name two flat bones in the body you could say the cranium the sternum the pelvis the scapula and the ribs those of you in the chat what do all of those uh, bones do what's their primary uh, function uh, little mushroom do you do these quite quizzes regularly i don't but if if you think it'd be a good thing to revise for then hopefully i can because uh at the moment obviously there's not lots and lots for you guys to do okay so define cardiac output it's the amount of blood ejected um or pumped from the heart in one minute so all that blood that leaves the um heart well done standard nabby both of you saying protection um we are then on to what is meant by the term fatigue so fatigue is extreme tiredness so you can't just say tired it wouldn't be sufficient you have to say extreme tiredness so when you are fatigued pretty much you can't really do much else uh, 
Uh, define health. It is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the, the the absence of disease or infirmity. So basically, what that is saying there is that you you have to be physically, mentally, and socially healthy, essentially, and then not have any illnesses. So you could have everything, but have a cold, and that means that you're not healthy. Um, so define fitness uh, it's to, to meet the demands of the environment. So you might be uh, fit and healthy, um, but you might not be able to walk as far as you need to. Now, I'm just going to take me off because I've just seen uh, on there. I'm, you can't actually see it. So let me just change that on my software. There you go. So you can see the bottom ones. OK, so back into there. So, um, so to meet the demands of the environment. So you could be fit. Um, and what you guys think of not being very fit. So if my fitness only requires me to walk to the fridge and back again, and that's my entire day, like a lot of us are maybe at the moment, we're fit enough to do that. If our environment changes, we're suddenly less fit or not fit. Okay, um, what is meant by the term flexibility? It's the range of movement around a joint. So some of you could touch your toes because around that joint, you've got more range of movement. And some of you maybe haven't. Um, what are the three stages of warm-up? It is a pause razor, it is stretching, and a game-related activity. I like to think about chewing gum. I would never take the chewing gum out of the wrapper and try and stretch it because it will break. So don't start stretching before you've got yourself warm with a pulse razor. Um, if we do circuit training, we can improve agility, speed, flexibility, and mainly we're looking at muscular endurance. Uh, name one test that can be used to measure power, any of the jump tests, so vertical jump test and the standard long jump test. So again, put your scores in the chat so you see how you guys got on. So uh, Lil Mushroom says that she got all, so got all the questions that I did correct. Doesn't tell me how many she did though. How many did you get, Stan? Five out of ten, but we haven't studied most of it. You're absolutely right, we haven't. Okay, so round three is about diagrams. Now, in the exam, you guys are going to see lots and lots of uh, diagrams. You're going to see things that are going to be showing you how things are going to be working, and you need to make sure that you understand exactly how you should answer these questions. So it's really, really important that we do these types of questions. Uh, Gurindy, you've got the same as Sam Weldon. Gurindy. Lucy, you're in year nine. That is absolutely fine. Again, it's just a good way of you guys seeing what you're going to be seeing in the exams. So, okay, in round three, it's going to be diagrams. Okay, so you're going to see things like this in your exam where you will be shown a diagram. So here we've got a diagram of a synovial joint, and it is asking you to label a and B. So we're going to get a mark for each here. So what is structure A and what is structure B? So again, if you play in the chat, do it in the chat. If you do it on paper, continue to do it on paper. So on these questions, you're only really going to be asked to state. So it's just typically what it is, not being asked to explain, not nothing else. Just tell us what it is. OK, so uh, question number two. What position does the elbow move into in position B? Now, this sort of question is something that really seems to trick um, lots and lots of students. So it will ask you from position A to position B. What it's saying is what's happening in position B in that, in that um, final picture. OK, so what position does the elbow move into in position B? So you can almost ignore position A because it doesn't really matter to you. Next one. So state the plane and the axis the gymnast is using to perform a cartwheel. So again, for this one, it's a one mark question, but we need two answers. OK, typically this is going to be a two mark question. It will say state the plane and state the axis. But for the benefit of this quiz today, we're only going to get one on here. So we're going to get uh, we're going to get one for the plane and one for the axis. Did I get these these questions off Revision World? Now, these are all actually, um, well, I don't know, I've never seen Revision World, to be honest. Uh, they're all past exam paper questions. Um, so you will see them on lots of papers. And hopefully, if we see you again before the end of the year, Stan, you'll see them in a test. So we'll see what you know and what you don't know. OK, um, again, next one on question uh, on round three is identify the agonist muscle which causes the hip movement in position B. So once again, it's given you position A, position B, position C. Some of that is a bit of distraction. You only need to know in this question 
what the what is happening in position B. So identify the agonist muscle which causes the hip movement you can see in position B. Okay, so next question. So this is a um, a question all about lung volumes, and this is a spirometry trace. So it's asking you to identify the lung volume labeled X. So if you can't see the uh, it very well, it is the one which is the longest one at the top. So you know, again, if you might watch it on your phone. So again, we're looking here at identifying the lung volume labeled X. Okay, next question. Identify the type of synovial joint working at the shoulder. So identify the type of synovial joint working at the shoulder. So the next question is the heart. So identify the areas of the heart labeled X and Y. So you'll see that there's a line going towards them. As you know, the heart is broken up into four chambers and it's asking you to label the one which is X and Y. Okay, next question. And this is the final one in this round. So this diagram represents which fitness test? Now, uh, in last year's paper, there was a question about this test, which asked you to um, to describe it, how it should be set up. You can label it like this and draw the diagram uh, if you so if you see you see fit. So again, if you're not quite sure how to explain it, you could draw the diagram. And again, if you could put the measurements on, that'd be absolutely amazing. You should get all the marks. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go back. Uh, through those ones um, so we can talk about why it is what it is so uh, in the chat guys if you have if you're ready to move on just give us a quick shout and i will do that okay so question one was label the structures a and b a is the cartilage and b is the synovial fluid if you've got both of those you get two marks if you've got one of them you get one mark next question was what position does the elbow move into uh, in position b uh, position b is extension so the elbow is moving from flexion to extension if you put extension you get a mark next one so state the plane and the axis the gymnast is using to perform a cartwheel so in a cartwheel, we fall sideways. So what happens there is that we work on a frontal plane, but a sagittal axis. So the sagittal axis goes straight through your middle and you basically spin around that point. And a frontal plane means that you're going to move to the side. Next question, uh, identify the agonist muscle which causes the hip movement. In position B. So in position B, we've got flexion at the hip, which is called by the hip flexors. So the agonist is the hip flexor. It's a muscle that lots and lots of GCSEP students really uh, forget about, and it's the easiest one. It says what it does in the title. It's a hip flexor. Next question: uh, Identify the lung volumes labeled X. Okay, so X is the big long one that we've got um, going from three liters up to six liters and what that one is is the inspiratory reserve volume so basically the most amount of um, air you can forcefully inhale identify the type of uh, joint working at the shoulder the shoulder joint is a ball and socket joint so that's what it's asking you to do it's basically saying what type of um of joint is the shoulder joint so right on this one, it asks you to identify the areas of the heart, which are labeled X and Y. If you look at the top of the, um, the diagram, 
it says right and left and it's actually the other way around so it's it's imagine that it was on you uh, and it we've got x which is the left atrium and y which is the left ventricle and then finally this diagram represents which fitness test and that is the illinois agility test so that is our round three done so again in the comments guys see how many you got Hopefully there's lots of good answers out there and loads of you done really, really well. Now, the reason there's a bit of a pause, guys, is that there's a quite a big delay between me streaming it, the chat coming up and things like that. So that's why there's a, it's a little bit stop start, which I apologize about. Uh, what's it out of? Good question, actually. Uh, it was out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's out of ten. So Abby got eight out of eight. So she might need to go back and just achieve them there. Amory got 11 out of 11, giving herself an extra mark maybe for a plane and an axis. We'll see. Uh, Lucy got four, but we'll see. Uh, I think Lucy was one saying that she's in year nine earlier. So that's still a great effort. Abby, what did year 10 out of 10? What did my boys get? What is Stan and Grindeep and Morgan? And well, I guess it's Abby. Eh? So Stan got six, Grindeep got seven. Is, more, is Morgan left us? Is he not here anymore? Okay, round four is our final round. And round four is literally about sports starts. So you may have seen lots of quizzes out there that have shown um, lots of maybe sports, things like that, using emojis. This one is like that. And well, we'll see. So here is round four. So in round four, you need to guess the sports start. So we've got all of these seven people who are all uh, sports stars from lots and lots of different sports. Um, and all I want you to do is to be able to tell me who they are. So using the emojis, can you work out who they are from number one through to number seven? So I've got number one, which is the person who's at the top left, and you'll see the little number by it. If you watch on your phone, you might not see it that well. So just give you a little bit of time to think about that. I'm just going to the chat because there were a couple of questions about some different things. Just while you work on that. So um, Archie asked a question: uh, What is going to happen to our sports that are meant to be assessed this year? For you, um, Archie, as a cricketer, it's difficult. I don't. We don't quite know yet. Uh, you may have some some of the season left. You may have none. You, we may have to organise certain certain act, summer activities, maybe in September. Um, or the exam board may may change what's going on. So for year 10s, there's not really been anything out there yet um, to say exactly what's going on. Uh, there's been obviously the concern about year 12, as uh, year, year 11s, uh, year 12s who have taken exams and year 13s who would be complete and everything. So at the moment, we don't really know. So any other questions about things like that while you guys are trying to work out who these sports stars are? Even any year 11s out there, because I reckon there's one or two that have snuck in. So we'll just go for another minute or so, because hopefully some of you work these out really, really quickly. Particularly number six. Number six is really simple. I don't understand. Okay, so let's go through these really quickly because I reckon there will be people who will be watching this in the future who missed all the fun when they could be involved in the chat. So let's do it in the uh, in the chat for us who are live, and then we'll for those of you who are watching not live, we'll go through the answers in a sec. So Lucy Longworth, number one, Lewis Hamilton. Congratulations, you are correct. So number one is Lewis Hamilton. Number two, who thinks they can get number two correct? So we've got an arm in the middle. Someone who's looking, they may be lifting lots of weights. We might call strong. So can you think of anyone who number two may be? This is where the uh, 
the delay between <laughs> the chat and what I've got going on is a bit different. Not seeing anybody get it. Okay, number two is Lance Armstrong. So Lance Armstrong was a cyclist who took lots and lots of drugs. What an Anthony. What a Stan. Okay, uh, number three, someone's already said it in the chat, is Lionel Messi. Number four, again, I already seen that one in the chat. I think Archie got that one, is Tiger Woods. Number five, haven't seen anybody get number five yet. I'll give you a clue. He is a former cricketer. He was England captain at one point. Can anybody get number five? Let's see again in the chat. Does anybody think they've got number five? Mike Baker, Alistair Cook, well done. So Alistair Cook, left-handed opening batsman for England and for Essex. And number six, uh, I think Stan got that one, it was Mike Tyson. And then number seven, my wife found this one very controversial. She wasn't having it. Who is number seven? Not seeing anybody get it yet. So number seven, I'll give you a little clue. The second thing is a video or a vid. That calendar shows us days. We might want a very small part of that where we could put that day and then the video. And it's not pig, but maybe the meat we get from pigs that might be thinly sliced. So day video ham. Sure, that's another clue, Stan. Come on. Yay, lots of people find it. David Beckham. Yeah, my wife wasn't having that one. She she yeah. She thought it was stupid. But there you go. That is our quiz done. Now, uh, again, in the comments, guys, now we've found out that our interconnection isn't as bad as we thought it was. We can look at doing a paper two one on Friday where we would have had the exam for paper two. Again, uh, if anybody is enjoying these or thinks that you would benefit from these, it's something that we can look at, at uh, doing in the future. Um, we can try and you know, get you guys involved because uh, I know there are a few of you out there that may prefer to do it a bit, uh, a bit more anonymously. Uh, Stan, I agree with the missus. Uh, I know, it, yeah, it wasn't the best. I've got a very good football one, so I'm back at school. Uh, I'll try and have a look at that one with you. And again, lots of you have probably already seen it if you're on Twitter. Um, I've put all the emoji quizzes that have, we've been going around pretty much for the throughout this whole, um, whole pandemic, really. Okay, so um, those people I do teach. This is for you. Um, make sure that you are working your coursework. And if there's anything that you don't know, um, try and email me. Um, those of you who are currently studying and working your coursework, go back in the into my videos and you'll see some of these kind of live-ish uh, things that I've done looking at the coursework um, where we have taken you through what you have to do for the section A, which is worth 50 marks, and then section B, which is worth 10. So again, it might be worth it. So have a look at the chat. So Lucy, yeah, it'll be, it'll be useful. Thank you very much. Um, looking forward to paper two, trying to get more classes involved, same time. Yeah, so um, we'll, do, we'll try two o'clock again. Uh, it's just a slightly easier time for getting what is at our office because um, my wife is working. But yeah, so it will be two o'clock on Friday and it will be paper two. So paper two, if you're not sure what's on it, go into my channel, uh, have a look at the videos. I have a video which is literally what's on paper two. So those of you who have studied a bit of it, you'll see what you've done and what you might be doing in the future. So um, about it really, apart from the fact that I've got 7,000 followers on, twi on Twitter, and only about 100 on Instagram. So if you, if you know you guys use Instagram, get following so you don't miss out on any of the updates that we do. And that's pretty much us done. So thank you for those of you who are live. Those of you who aren't live, keep watching. Thanks. Cheers, guys.